Welcome back. And in our top business story, the UAE will pump heavy investment into the oil and gas sector to ensure the world oil market receives the supplies it needs. That's what uh, His Excellency Mohammed bin Dayan Al Hamali, the UAE Minister of Energy, has stated. At the 13th International Oil Summit in Paris, he said that this implies heavy investment, not just in hydrocarbon production, but also in renewable energy sources that will allow us to maximize our exports. The construction of nuclear power stations, for example, will ensure that we can maintain the present level of hydrocarbon exports at a time of growing demand for domestic power supplies, he added. The UAE, he indicated, would continue focusing on its core markets in Asia, where long-term supply relationships will continue to bear fruit for both sides. Looking ahead, he added that it could well be that the biggest changing trends might well come from the United States. The changing habits of travellers and increasing demand for fast, efficient and reliable service at all times are the driving advancements in the travel and tourism industry. Forecasts by Informa Telecoms and Media reveal that the average mobile penetration rate for the Middle East region was more than 97% at the end of 2011 and is expected to reach over 107% at the end of 2012, exceeding the mobile penetration rate in the US and Canada for the first time. Hence, companies offering travel technology solutions continue to innovate. Amadeus launched a unique multilingual mobile application at the Arabian travel market to empower travelers across the MENA region. The Amadeus mobile traveler will enrich customer travel experience and optimize business potential. It is a fully integrated and complete mobile application designed to support pre-trip, in-trip and post-trip functionalities, providing travelers with access to real-time travel information, including flight, car, rental and hotel bookings. The application is supported by iPhone, BlackBerry, WAP and Android in Arabic, English and French languages. Mobile is today one of the biggest um, tools in, in, in the business, especially the smartphones have brought in a lot of changes in the way people work. And we're going to launch something on the mobility, which will help consumers be more faster in, 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 in connecting to their travel providers and making the right choices they need. And it's not restricted to air, it adds hotel, car, everything else. DP World announced today a significant boost to DP World Melbourne, Australia's capabilities with the first eight of 16 new energy efficient straddle carriers starting operations. The new equipment will also help reduce DP World's environmental footprint as well as improve efficiency and productivity. A second batch of eight straddle carriers is due for delivery later this year. So with that, let's now take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. Standard and Poor's decided to downgrade 11 Spanish banks on Monday, in which, in response, Sanes de Santa Maria stated that the government is carrying out the reform of the financial system with the aim of recovering credibility. Well, to talk more about this, we're now joined by Bruce Powers, the head of research at Trust Securities. Welcome to the show Hi, today. Um, so now, how does this S&P downgrade actually reflect on Spain then? Well, this follows the uh, country rating downgrade from uh, last week, and it's certainly going to hurt the refinancing or financing of any new debt for both the country and the uh, banks. Uh, now, we're already seeing the impact today with the new debt auction in Spain, where even though they were able to reach their maximum allocation of new debt, they had to pay 1.4% more than they paid two months ago. So we're already seeing a big requirement of increased interest rates from investors. Now, S&P has been concerned that there's a lot more losses on the banks that have not been fully recognized and that this is going to really hurt the country's ability, the government's ability, to turn around its own public finances. So with the higher debt costs, that, of course, is going to be much more difficult to do. We already see Spain uh, moving into another recession with economic contraction in the first quarter of 0.3%. 
So what actually needs to be done for these rating agencies to improve their outlook then? Well, first of all, I think it's going to get uh, worse before it, it gets better. They need to, the banks need to work through all the bad loans that are on their books. Um, there needs to be some type of positive economic outlook or economic stability coming and uh, stability in the financial system. With the austerity that's being put in by the government, uh, which is contracting uh, growth potentially, uh, and the banks uh, now having some pressure on them, that's going to be even more uh, difficult to come from, uh, to, to happen. Now, Spain had one of the worst housing bubbles in, in the whole world. They're now paying the price for that. Um, last month in April, their bonds were the worst performers of all the sovereign debt uh, around the world. 